Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a rather different video. This one might be a little bit of a short one, but I wanted to touch on an interesting behind the scenes topic that I've been thinking about a little bit here. And that is talking about Gran Turismo 7's photo mode, particularly in, we'll start with scapes and then go into replay mode and kind of give you a behind the scenes look on how I make my thumbnails for at least the Gran Turismo 7 content. So for those who know a little bit or who have played Gran Turismo 7 before, you at least be a little bit familiar with scapes. Uh, for those who haven't really, this will be kind of a fun thing for you. Scapes is a unique mode where you can choose a location and you can put down a car and then you can take really nice photos. So Chicago was just added. So let's give a quick look here. There's a couple of different spots here. Do they have the bean? No, they don't. Why do you add Chicago but not have the bean? God damn it. <laughs> so for example, Let's do the, I don't know, West Lake Street Bridge. So then we'll place a car. What are we all thinking today? Uh, 911 Turbo. And the fun thing about this is, first and foremost, it already looks gorgeous. I don't know offhand if they go to the location and take photos or if they're able to just find a way to just remake it in game. I'm not quite sure uh, what exactly they do, but it's very specific locations throughout like a certain setting, for instance. Uh, so going back to here, we'll grab our car. We can just kind of move it around here. Kind of put it there. And then we can, of course, choose some settings here. We can do travel speed and headlights, brake lights. Actually, I will put some of these on here but this is the really cool thing when it comes to the photo mode we'll touch on this again in replay mode as well I think Gran Turismo 7's photo mode is probably the most powerful one out there in any racing game right now and the reason being is when it comes to racing games, you'll either have a photo mode or you won't. And the photo mode that is normally typically offered is you pause the game, you're able to like walk around the car in the pause set of where you are in your world. And then you're just able to take like a snapshot and some like, yeah, you'll be able to like pan and you're able to zoom and you're able to move around. And sometimes you're able to add like certain effects like fine, but I really appreciate Kaz for doing this. You can tell that he is definitely a photographer. So you can adjust the f-stop. You can adjust the focus, the type of focus, mind you. Um, and depending on the f-stop, you can actually have different background blurring. Exposure correction, shutter speed. And then if your car is moving, of course, being able to adjust uh, kind of like the motion blur and stuff. And then you can even go as far as like, okay, I want to take a photo for like my phone's wallpaper. So you can be able to do it in like portrait mode type thing. And then adding grids and guidance and then some additional detailed settings. For example, like I know in replay mode, you can have like um, if you're in the race, you can have like dust settings and whatnot. So that's uh, general camera settings and then we get into the effects so we can adjust the temperature so cooler and warmer uh exposure correction and then we can have like these different types of presets as well and then this one i like to bring down quite a bit especially in replay mode is glare that will be something that again we'll touch on in a moment and again Masking, I haven't really touched on masking a whole lot, but then we can have individual car effects. So, I mean, you can tell already that with this, there is so much you can do with scapes and the photo mode. And for example, let's just kind of do uh, one over 500. Kind of bring this. Do a little bit of a focus. 
I want... I want a kind of a blurrier background, but I think the car is far enough away that we might have an issue with that. So I don't know. Let's do... Let's just start with these settings and see where it gets us, and then we can go shoot. If you have PlayStation 5, rendering takes no time. I mean, like, just look at that. You can tell that it is a little bit of a video game, but it's really crazy to see when you get into Reddit and you see some individuals who literally take hours upon hours of adjusting their settings to make it look as realistic pos as possible. And there are some photos that people post through Reddit that literally look realistic. Like, it is genuinely jaw-dropping what you can do with this game. So that's uh, just that. I'm going to try a couple of different settings. See if I can get a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, that just seems a lot sharper to me. Again, as you guys can tell, I'm not really much of a photographer. I played around a little bit with it. I know my basic photography settings, but not anything like technical per se. But that's overall scapes. So for those of you who've already seen scapes, I'm sorry for re-elaborating on this, but I wanted to give an overview for those who are getting used to this or are new to this. So now we're back to the main menu. We'll go to showcase and this is where we go down to my items and we'll go down to uh, let us do a replay that oh what's a good one i think monza was a good one this is the no chicane this is from a while ago all right so we are in replay i normally like to turn on all race info for the moment being just so i can kind of keep track of you know if i remember if there's a moment where i like really fell down the grid where it's like I normally like to just kind of scroll through the replay like this until I find like a good moment. And normally for the thumbnails, because I have like first lap crashes, they're normally pretty uh, early, so we won't go too far here. Let's see if we can get our car kind of close to the action. And then we'll go to kind of the walk around mode here. So immediately you notice the frame rate is dropped in half. And that is because we are now really utilizing ray tracing. So we can, I think we could just kind of walk forever. This is the fun thing too with most other racing games. When you have like the walk around mode, it's like you can only go within like five car lengths of the car and then they kind of like lock you off. But for this, it's just like, I don't know, let's just go over here and... I don't know, talk to the marshals over here and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and as you can tell, with the ray tracing, the glare is just absolutely crazy. So that's why, like I said before, we'll get rid of that in a little bit. I love these little dust particle effects here. That is amazing. So at this point, I just try to use the best artistic eye that I possibly can. And if you notice, I have kind of like a certain framing that I always do for my cars in the thumbnails, where it's normally like kind of up here. It's nice and low, and normally I have it where it's like side by side action. Um, very rarely will I do like kind of from like these kind of angles. This is probably the close. This is probably the best one here normally again the uh, the photos that i normally try to grab are when we're really clumped up up in the pack and we're not quite there but we're this is best kind of framing that i can come up with we'll kind of do it here i'll activate the camera and then first and foremost we got to focus on the main car and immediately we have to turn glare 
Normally, I'll just bring it down to where it's like an acceptable level where it's like, yes, it's fine to have a little bit of glare. But even even like that's too much, so this will have to bring down quite a bit. So then here into the camera settings, this is what I normally do because I like to have a really nice landscape shot with everything kind of in focus. Shutter speed, I'll normally bring down to one over 500 seconds. That way, there's as little motion blur as possible. You get everything. So for example, if I don't, we'll do one over 60. We'll take a quick photo, let this render out. There we go. So I mean, it is a really, aesthetically, it's a really cool photo. Like I, it really shows the motion of the vehicle, shows the sense of speed. And honestly, on its own, this is a really cool thumbnail. I think I need to rework the framing a little bit. So to do a little bit, so the car is a little bit more central. Yeah, that's a lot better. And the other thing too, when it comes to these shots, I normally like to make sure that there's a lot of space on the top and on the bottom because I know that I'm going to be having like the Gran Turismo 7 logo, my little logo on the bottom, and then up at the top I'm going to have that little banner that kind of matches the episode title. So again, I'm trying my best to keep the top and the bottom as open as possible and having as much action in the middle kind of 50% of the frame. So again, aesthetically, really great photo. I really enjoy this. But it's not quite there for me. And what I mean is when it comes to that, I like to bring focus to the opponent as well. And normally how I've done that in the past is adjusting, like I've said before, the shutter speed. So this one's a little bit interesting because I'll play around with it. I want to have a little bit of sense of speed to show that there is some motion but I don't want to have it to the fact that there's so much motion that you can't really focus on the opponent behind. So I'll start playing around with this. So I'll do 1 over 250, see if the 787B behind us is still kind of in focus, not really blurred out so much. Yeah, perfect. So at 1 over 500 is normally when you start getting into like landscape photography territory, where it's just like, Everything is in focus. I, I think, you know, even one over a thousand, all of those, that's when it's really everything is super sharp, super in focus. So here I wanted, like I said before, I wanted a little bit of a middle ground. I wanted to still have the both vehicles in motion, but both in focus. I think one over 250 is perfect. So this is probably what we're going to work with. This is probably going to be our photo that we're going to use for the thumbnail here. So versus trying to save this and export this i'll kind of show you guys a little bit of the cheater method that i do that you guys think might be a little bit funny actually so this won't be the highest resolution possible it won't be 4k 8k anything like that uh, i've noticed that even when you upload like a 1080p or even a 4k photo to youtube the amount of videos that youtube is posting or uh, supposed to just have on their servers on a daily basis is quite huge so to have that high of a re resolution for each and every thumbnail would take up so much server space so i've noticed that they do compress them greatly like when i'm looking at youtube videos on a tv like i've noticed that they're really really blurry and pixelated and stuff but anywho what we do here is a couple of things. We'll do remote play on PC, but I've got this program behind here that is Rewast, where basically it takes your keyboard and or controller and remaps it so you can use it as a PlayStation 5 controller. So we'll apply that. We'll go into remote play. We'll full screen that. So then now we've got our photo, we'll do our little hotkey and yep we are using the snipping tool and I'll go just from the very top the very very bottom and then we'll go to yep paint <laughs> I kid you not this is part of the process everyone and then I'll just save it 
Now this one is a little bit dumb, but uh, there is a particular reason why I do this. I use Premiere Elements for the thumbnail making, which is the exact same as my video editing software. Reason being is that I can have the same text kind of being used between videos and thumbnails and everything is universal. Plus, like, Premiere Elements I've used for years now, so it's I know it better than the back of my hand. So we'll extend some of these basic things out. And we'll go back to our photo that we grabbed. And we'll drop it in. And already it's looking pretty good. So I'll just quickly go over here. We'll zoom in ever so slightly to get rid of that kind of stuff down to the bottom. We will bring it back. So yeah, the basic stuff that I've already got set up part of the template is we've got the channel logo in the bottom left corner. And that was very much so inspired or reminiscent of uh, Rooster Teeth, Achievement Hunter, Funhouse, those guys. Um, I felt that it's very important to have that in the thumbnail because as you're scrolling through YouTube, you don't even need to see what channel it's from. You can see like in the thumbnail who posted it. And I think that's very powerful in order to bring people in. Just that little logo in the corner and saying, hey, Matt did that, you know. Um, and then, of course, we've got the Grand Turismo logo, and then up here we've got at 50% opacity, I want to say, just this little black bar. So then we'll grab our frequently used text. We will say how I make thumbnails in GT, in or with, with GT7. And then I've got all these different cells there. Um, it's always the first one. And then we can just bring that up. There we go. And then we've got our thumbnail. And then at this point is where I go to the image, do resolution of 1080p, file name, just GT7 thumbnail. I'll replace that later when I get the actual video done. Click save. And then done. There is our thumbnail. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I know I don't do behind the scenes stuff all that often. I mean, I do stuff about the rig and product reviews and that kind of stuff. But uh, let me know down in the comment section down below if you guys would like some more behind the scenes on how we create videos, what my process is, what my thought like what I do. Um, again, just let me know down in the comment section below. I, I'd love to hear what your guys' opinion is. And again, uh, Gran Turismo 7. I can't give it enough praise because it is a racing game at heart. It is an amazing racing game at heart. But with what you can do with the photography, and that's just something like a side thing that you don't even have to touch. Don't have to touch replays, don't have to touch any of that. But it's so powerful for content creators like myself. Because, I mean, look, that took me a couple minutes. I mean, if I didn't explain all of it, just went to the replay and just grabbed a good photo and then, you know, did all of that. It takes me five minutes and it just looks beautiful. It really does. So, again, um, let me know what your all thoughts are down in the comment section down below, whether it be about my process or your guys' thoughts on the photography mode in Gran Turismo 7. Uh, again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Really appreciate all of that. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Take care. Bye!